Praise the Lord. So glad to have you back here with us one more time at God's Got a Plan. You know, this is that time of year. Easter is that time of year when we acknowledge Christ's death and his resurrection. And I want you to know tonight, today, whenever you're looking at this, that it is his love that lifted you. His love. He, he, when he was lifted to the cross, on the cross, it was love that lifted you. I want you to know his love for you is, oh my God, it's endless, it's ceaseless. In other words, there's no way you can really comprehend or fathom the, the, the agape love, the God kind of love that he has towards you, his people. Oh, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. So that's the theme for tonight, love lifted me. Love lifted me. There's a song in the church, love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. And I want you to know not just lifted me, but love lifted you. And we're here today. Why? Because of his love towards us, his love for us. And God, God just has a way of doing things that might not make sense to, to the average person. Might not make sense to even that person who is really anchored in God because you want to know why I have to go this way and not that way in order to bring about, uh, let's just say, the end to that test or that trial. See, because to tell you the truth, being people, we want to, we want to take the soft, the soft route. We want to go to the light way. We don't want to deal with no heavy stuff. But I'm here to tell you, whatever it is you're going through today, God is with you, and I want you to know he's got you covered, and he's going to help you get through whatever it is you're going through. Why? Because love lifted you. Love lifted me, and it's a blessing to know that we have a Savior. Now, I want to show you the love of Jesus. See, you have to be able to see the love of Jesus towards you, and this is what is wrong with so many of us today because we really can't comprehend uh, let's just say what took place on the cross and we can't comprehend the love of God. OK, but let, let me let me just give you something in Matthew's chapter 27, starting at the 27th verse. And you might want to study this, read this on your own. But this is just a glimpse into what Christ did so that you can be free. This is a glimpse of what Christ had to go through to show his love for you. And I want you to know today that you were worth it. You, you were worth it. You might not feel like you were worth it. What you might be stuck in or going through right now, you know, you might be telling yourself, I don't know how God could love me the way I am and look at all of what I've done. Well, I want you to know he went through this so that you can put an end to all of what you're going through. Not to say that you're, there's going to be a complete end and you won't have to go through nothing else. We're going to always be going through something as long as we're on the planet. But it's a good thing to know that as I go through, I'm going through with Jesus. So look at the 27th verse of the 27th chapter of Matthews. And here's what it says. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. And they stripped him. I'm going to break this down. I want you to listen to this now. And they stripped him, stripped him naked, and put on him a scarlet robe, purple robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, in other words, weave together a crown of thorns. And then this is what they did. They put it upon his head. They put it on his head. And a reed in his right hand. And they bowed down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. In other words, they belittled him. They made fun of him. They put him down. They mocked him. And they did everything that 
you would say is just despicable. But because they had no respect for this man, not really knowing and understanding the purpose of the cross. They seen it as a horrible death. They seen it as a way of putting an end to him, but really wasn't able to see in the spirit that what they were perpetrating was going to give him life everlasting. Not that he didn't have that, but he wanted you. He wanted me. He wanted those that would come to him to be able to see his love is able to lift us out of anything we're going through. And I want you to know now, his father's love towards him, Lord Jesus, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And what, can, what would God say about you? What would God say to you today if he was to look upon your life? You know, something that came to mind, uh, when the last time you thought about waking up in the morning and saying, good morning, Jesus, uh, will you be coming back today? Today. See, today. He came back for some folk today, but he didn't come back for you. He's coming back for some folk tomorrow. Hopefully he's not coming back for you. But will you be ready? Will you be ready to meet him? I want you to know it's the love of God that lifted you up out of the depths of despair, out of the addiction, out of the affliction, out of the different things that were meant to break you down. It was his love that lifted you. Lord, and I'm just so blessed and so happy to know that he loved me. The Bible says God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. And then the 17th verse of John 3, 16, John 3, 17, here's what it says. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And might is a mighty big word. In other words, it's going to take a choice and a decision coming out of you. And when you look at all of what he suffered so that you could be saved, so that you can be part of the in crowd. And I'm not talking about the in crowd of the world. I'm talking about being a part of the in crowd in Christ. I'm talking about being in Christ, knowing that God so loved the world, knowing that God loved you more than you could ever possibly love yourself. Lord Jesus. And when you think about how much you love yourself and how many times you said this was a good life, but when you look at some of the choices and decisions that have come out of your life, that have come out of those choices and decisions, some of the consequences and the different things that I had to deal with because of bad choices and decisions. When others may have let you go, God was still there holding your hand. And it's a blessing to know that he loves us that much. But look what it says in the 18th verse of John 3 and 18. And it says, he that believes on him, on Jesus, is not condemned. But he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Oh, my God. See, John 3, 16 is a powerful verse of Scripture. And it reminds us and it shows us why when you look at Matthew 27 and 27 down to uh, the 29th verse, what I read to, what I read up to. And matter of fact, and it says there, going back to Matthew 27, please go back with me to Matthew 27. And uh, in the 29th verse, and it says there, and when they had plated a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head in a reed in his right hand, and they bowed down before him. They bowed down before him and mocked him. We're to bow down before him in reverence. We are to reverence this God who's loving us even when we were in sin. See, he didn't, he didn't save you first. No, 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 no. You came to him a sinner. We are, and if you're saved, you are still a sinner saved by grace. But it's his love that lifted you. It's his love that is able to keep you and sustain you. It's his love that is, let you, that is given to you to let you know 
Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Look at the 30th verse. And they spit on him. Mm, mm, mm. Did you see? see? See, in these particular verses, you can see what he went through so that you can come back into right relationship with the Father. But in order for you to do that, you have to have a, re, a, a, the, a right relationship with Jesus Christ. See, when you have that relationship with Jesus Christ, that opens the door to you having a relationship with the Father. And then he goes on to say, and they, they took the reed and hit him on the head with it. And after all of that, they mocked him some more and took the robe off him and put his own clothes on him and led him away to be crucified. I mean, you talk about pouring salt in a wound. I mean, he went through so that you can be free. My brothers and sisters, beloved, you don't have to go through. Going through is a choice. I'm going to say it again. Going through is a choice. And what you're focusing on, if, it's not, if you're not focusing on Jesus and on the love that he's given to you, I believe he says in, in, in 1 Corinthians 13 and talks about, the, what, it talks about the love of God. There's faith, hope, and charity. And the greatest of these is, is, is charity, being love. God's love for you. And it's his love that's going to continue to lift you up, hold you up, and to draw you near. That's the thing about his love that we don't want to overlook. His love is able to draw you nearer to the cross. His love is able to draw you nearer to him because he wants you to come nearer to him. So when you look at the word love, love is a virtue. It is a virtue which is one of the many attributes of God. Love is a virtue which is one of the many attributes of God. And then when you took look at the word virtue, for those of you that might not know and understand what virtue is, virtue is a moral is the moral excellence. See, when we talk about virtue, we're talking about the moral excellence of God. We're talking about a God that knew or know no sin. We're talking about Jesus. The Bible says, even Pilate says, I find no fault in him. No sin in him. The Bible says we all fall short. But this man named Jesus, through all of the persecution, through all of the mocking, through all of what he suffered, the Bible says he never said a mumbling word. He didn't complain about all of what. Matter of fact, he said to the father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord Jesus. When the last time you said that to somebody that did something did you wrong? Did something that you didn't like or didn't feel comfortable with? When the last time you were saying, oh, God, can you forgive them for they know not what they do? I want you to know and understand being meek doesn't mean you're weak. That's being able to restrain yourself, being able to, let's just say, give it to the Lord and trust God to do what only he can do. Love lifted you. It's the love of God that lifted you. It was the love of the Father that lifted the Son, and the Son is lifting you today. Thank you, Jesus. And then look at this here. Look at this here. It's, it's, it's the moral excellence. The virtue is moral excellence, is goodness, and is righteousness. And we're talking about God's righteousness, and we're not talking about self-righteousness. Because many in the church can be self-righteous. You can feel or believe so much about yourself in reference to thinking that, you, are, you have already arrived, and I'm led to remember that Paul says, I have not yet apprehended on how to live this life. There's always more to learn. There's always more to experience, more to do, more to be a part of. God want to widen your coast tonight. And in order for your coast to be widened, you need to know and understand that it's the love of God that's going to bless you. It is the love of God that is able to keep you. So, Understanding this, God's nature is to love. God's nature is to love. It's a blessing to know that God loves us the way he does. Isn't it a blessing to know that there's someone that is able to look past your faults and he's able to see your needs? Oh, I want you to know this evening, today, I want you to know that God is in the business of loving his people. And if you are his people, I want you to know he is deeply in love with you. 
Oh, you are special to God. Uh, you're called to be a peculiar people, a chosen people. You are called to be the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So a man's purpose in life is to love Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I said? A man's purpose in life is to love Jesus Christ. That should be your main purpose in life, to love Jesus Christ. God's son more than anyone or anything in this life, you are to love Jesus Christ. That should be your main purpose. But all of that is to lead up to this. Because how can you say you love God, but you don't love that brother you're sharing your home with, that family member, that co-worker, that person in the church, out of the church, on your job. But you can say, I love the Lord, but you don't get along with other people. Look at this in 1 John 4 and 7. 1 John 4 and 7. Look at what it says. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. See, you don't know God until you're able to love another. And, and I don't mean just loving those that will love you, but even loving the difficult. And I, I'm, I, was, and I might be sitting here behind this table right now ministering a word to you, but I want you to know I just received that for myself. You have to be able to love others and those who are difficult. You have to be able to love those. In other words, we can learn to agree to disagree. I've learned how to uh, agree to disagree. Why? Because everybody's not going to see things the way you see it. Everybody's not going to enter into a situation or a circumstance and work through it the way you might want to work through it. So we have to be able to trust God in the midst of these, these, these tests and trials and circumstances, these things that are designed to let us know that we're not going to make it. You're going to make it. I'm going to say it again. You're going to make it. Why are you going to make it? You're going to make it because God loves you. Why are you going to make it? You're going to make it because God's plan for your life is better than your plan for your life. And because you have made a decision, make that decision tonight to let his love lift you. Let his love. If you're sad, if you're broke, busted, and disgusted, if you're going through a financial trial or test, if, if you're going through a sickness or disease, if you're wrestling with an addiction, whatever the circumstance, whatever the trial is, I want you to know his love is able to lift you out of the depths of despair. His love is able to turn your situation around. His love is able to encourage you and let you know, my God, the best is yet to come. I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's what you should be saying tonight. I am going to hold on to God's unchanging hands. That's what it's about, my brothers and sisters, holding on to God's unchanging hands. Because look at what the eighth verse says. He that loves not don't know God because God is love. See, because God is love. In this was manifested the love of God because God is love. Was manifested the love of God toward us because God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Why did he send his son into the world? that you might live through him. It's not about you doing your own thing. It's about you knowing and understanding that his son was sent on purpose to bring about the greater will of God in your life. God wants you to be blessed. Oh, do you want to be blessed? How bad do you want to be blessed? Well, allow his love to lift you. If you're in a bad state right now, if you're going through right now, see the bright side. See, where there's right, there's wrong. Where there's good, there's bad. Where there's pain and sorrow, there is joy and gladness. You have to make a decision how you choose to feel. Matter of fact, before you can feel anything, you have to make a decision who you're going to trust. Are you going to trust what that voice is telling you in your head? Are you going to trust your symptoms? Or are you going to trust the word of God? Well, myself, I'm going to trust the word of God. 
And there's going to be times when you're going to say, oh, Lord, how long? Lord, when, 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 when are you going to deliver me? Lord, when are you going to fix this? Lord, when are you going to straighten it out? Lord, when are you going to bring them back home? Lord, when are you going to get me that job? Lord, when? Sometimes we just need to come to God with an attitude of gratitude and just say, Lord, I love you and I want to thank you for being who you are. Oh, I, I want you to know that, that, you know, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on yourself and don't give up on God. I want you to know God haven't given up on you. And his love is still so very much alive. His love is going out to you right now to let you know that you don't have to lay in that hurt. You don't have to continue to deal with the conflict of shame and pain. Oh, my God. He wants you to know that you're somebody special in him. And this is why God sent his son so he can show his love to you, towards you. Because Jesus says, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. And look what he says now in the 10th verse. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. The propitiation means he took your place. We should have been the one that was hanging on that cross. We should have been the one that died, went in that grave. We should have been the one that wore that crown of thorns. We should have been the one that were pierced in the side. We should have been the one that was hanging high. But no, he took your place. He took my place. And he wants you to know you are very much loved. And because of that, Oh, my God, you don't have to continue to suffer. If you're out there suffering and going through, oh, my God, I'm going to say a special prayer for you in a, in a few minutes. But I want you to you don't have to suffer like that. no more. Let it go. Let it go and trust God and realize his love. God so loved the world. God so loved you. I want to look at you right now. I'm looking right at you right now. God so loved you that he sent his son so that his love could lift you out of whatever it is you're going through. If you can just believe it, you can receive it. And I believe that today will be a turnaround day. This will be a breakthrough for you. And that's what this is about. I'm speaking to you personally, my brother. I'm speaking to you personally, my sister, a mother, a father, a son, a daughter. I'm speaking to you right now to let you know the love of God has lifted you up out of whatever it is was trying to bring you down and to keep you in that place of despair. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off and go forward. Your life is too precious. Your future is too precious for you to live it out in the past. Let go of the hurtful past and realize there's something laying in wait for you that is going to bless you real good. Oh, God loves you so much, and we love you, and we want you to know how blessed you are to be in Christ. I want to I wanna kind of end a little bit early because I really want to pray because I know there are many out there that know Christ, but you just can't see him moving in your situation and right now you're struggling in your prayer life and you're struggling even when you're in your walk and whatnot. And we here at God's Got a Plan, we want to help you stay connected. See, it's about who you are connected with and who you are connected to. When you're connected to God, I'm here to tell you, you're connected to life. So right now I want to intercede for those of you who are backslidden. Matter of fact, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to accept him, you, there's something you heard tonight to let you know that Christ want to want to, let's just say, bring you into the family. Repeat these words after me right now. Dear Father, I come before you this today asking for the forgiveness of my sin. I'm asking you, Father God, to take me as I am. Oh, Father, I pray that you would forgive me, wash me clean, change my mind, change my heart. And Lord, I believe that through my confession, 
I am forgiven and I am loved by you. And I thank you for this new beginning and this fresh start. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now get into a word, church. Get into that word, read that Bible, and just spend some time with the Lord, and he'll spend some time with you, and you would be amazed at how your life will turn around. And now for, the, for, the, for those of you out there that, that need some prayer because you, you, you're at a situation in your life where you don't quite know and understand, you know, when your healing is going to manifest, where you don't understand or know when you're going to get that job or don't know when you're going to be reconciled to family, I want to intercede right now for the rest of you, okay? So, Father, we just want to thank you today, Lord, for the leading of your spirit. Lord, you said it's not by might nor by power, but only by your spirit. Lord, I'm praying for the backslider. Lord, I'm praying for those of us, Lord God, who are struggling, Father God, who's struggling with the love for another person, Lord, a love for a family member, love for a child, love for a spouse, love for a, a, a member of the church, Lord God, I pray that you would place forgiveness in our hearts tonight. Help us to love one another the way you have loved us, the way you have forgiven us, Lord. Help us to forgive another. And then, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let us see, know, and understand how awesome and how big your love is towards us. And I pray, Father, that you will bless my sister. I pray that you will bless my brother. I pray, Father God, this would be a turnaround day. I pray, Father, that you will open every closed door that need to be opened in their life. And if there's someone struggling behind a closed door of hurt, pain, and shame, I pray that you open that door and bring them out. Bring them out right now in the name of Jesus. I see you coming out. I see you coming out. I see you coming out. I see you coming out in the name of Jesus. You're coming out. Now, he's not bringing you out for you to go back. Receive it and believe it. If you can receive it, you can. And if you can believe it, you can receive it. I want you to know this is your day to be blessed. Walk in the renewed power and strength of God's word and know that you are loved Know that you are loved by God, and this is his love that went on, on the cross so that you can have that life and have it more abundant. We hear it, God's got a plan. We love you. Come back and see us again. Same time, same place, same station. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And I want to thank those of you who have been watching by way of YouTube. Continue to reach out. Subscribe to us. And also, if you see something you like, be sure to hit that like button and tell your friends who's watching the shows, television shows. Tell them, share that television show with them and let them know they can follow us also. If not on television, on the Internet. All right. God bless you now. Have yourself a good day. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Yes, I believe.